This lesson deals with a complex algebra representation of sinusoids. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 5. Let's begin this section with what's called Euler's formula or Euler's identity. It's stated as follows. E to the j theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus j times the sine of theta. Here j is the square root of minus 1. In calculus we use the letter i for this, but we use i for current, so we'll just pick the next letter of the alphabet. Complex numbers can be expressed in two forms, rectangular or polar. In rectangular form, we have a real part plus j times an imaginary part. In polar form, we have a length and an angle. You represent e to the j theta with a shorthand notation of just the angle theta with the angle symbol. Let me show you how to interpret these equations. Suppose they have a complex number n that's equal to c times e to the j theta. So we'll multiply c times our Euler identity and get c times the cosine of theta plus c times the sine of theta. This then would be what we call a and then plus jb. Or just in general, this is the real part and this is the imaginary part. We we'll use a shorthand notation of re for real and im for imaginary. You can also show this graphically by using an x-axis that's real and a y-axis that's imaginary. So here we have a phasor which has a length of c and has an angle of theta with respect to the x-axis. In algebra, we had a way to express the y-axis and the x-axis if we knew the length and the angle, and that is that the y-axis is c times the sine of theta, and the x-axis is equal to c times the cosine of theta. So given the phasor with the length and the angle, we can find the real and the imaginary part. We can also go the other way because we have a right triangle here. So if we know the sides, we can find the hypotenuse by taking the square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, the two sides that are here. The angle theta is just the arctangent of the imaginary term divided by the real term. Not the j, but the value that goes with it. So b divided by a. Now given this notation, we could then say that the cosine of theta is the real part of e to the j theta, and that the sine of theta is the imaginary part of e to the j theta. Now in the ebook, there are bookmarks, and one is labeled supplemental problems. With each chapter, there are problems that you can work on once you've covered the theory. We've covered enough pages so far to do supplemental problems 8.1 and 8.2. There's also videos for these to help you understand the problem and the solution. I won't call these out anymore, but just simply look at that bookmark and see where we are in the pages, and you can see which problems that you can work on that you have enough background to do. Suppose so you have a voltage V of T, which again has an amplitude, an angle, and a frequency. In other words, V sub A times the cosine of omega T plus V. We're going to do the phasor transform and transform this from the time domain to the frequency domain. So let's take the cosine of omega t plus phi and write that as the real part of e to the j quantity omega t plus phi. They could multiply this out and you get e to the j omega t and then e to the j phi. So when you multiply these two, you're just going to add their arguments. So we could bring the term v sub a inside. It's just a scalar. I want to bring it over here by the second term. And so we have v times e to the j phi, and that's our phasor representation with a magnitude and angle. And then the other term here, e to the j omega t, that's our spinning of our merry-go-round. So we're going to suppress that term in doing our calculations, and we're going to put it back at the end. And of course, you're taking the real part of this expression. You can also do this for current. And this is the phasor transform of V of t. Now, in most textbooks, they use a bold letter, but it's kind of hard with handwriting, so I'm going to use a letter V here with a broken arrow. And this is going to mean the magnitude and the angle of the phasor. And again, this would be the phasor transform of V sub A times the cosine of omega t plus V. And again, the phasor transform transforms the sinusoidal function from the time domain to the complex number frequency domain. And we're going to learn how to do the manipulations of these phasors, then we're going to want to come back into the time domain. This is called the inverse phasor transform. So we'll get a result in voltage or current. Here I'll do voltage. And I'm going to multiply that phasor by e to the j omega t, and then take the real part of that. Again, our phasor has an amplitude and an angle, so v sub a e to the j phi. I can bring the v sub a out again now, because it's just a scalar. I can combine these two together by multiplying these two exponentials and adding their powers. So I have e to the j quantity omega t plus phi. And then the real part of this would be the real part of the cosine plus j times the sine, which is just the cosine part. That's how we're going to come back into the time domain. It's actually quite simple. It sounds very formal here with the terms inverse and the phasor transform. And again, the inverse phasor transform transforms the frequency domain result to the sinusoidal time domain result. This is how we're going to use complex algebra to represent sinusoids. 